Hey, this is Minister Briefing. I'm Matt Steen. Over there is Todd Rhodes. Todd, uh, are you are you a big late night TV watcher? Um, you know, off and on, according to what my sleep cycle is. But uh, yeah, I, I you know I actually uh, uh, tape a couple of them every once in a while. We've got the automatic DVR thing. I don't watch all of them, but every once in a while, I'll pop one on and uh, watch the first part of the monologue anyway. Yeah. Well, the reason I ask, Rich Birch and his new blog, Unseminary, which is a cool name, by the way, um, yeah. re- wrote a post the other day um, talking about Jimmy Fallon's desk and, and, and how important Jimmy Fallon's desk is to his success as a late-night TV show. Um, essentially what he's saying is, is Jimmy Fallon does a lot of stuff that's, that's developed for our current culture and the YouTube, you know, in, in YouTube We'll leave mm-hmm. it at that, right? Um, and and how – so what he's doing is so much – is so different from the Leno's, from the Letterman's, and and what people traditionally call a late-night TV show. But at the same time, you know, he's still got the skyline behind him, the desk, the guy off stage, you know, and the live band and all that kind of stuff because that's what's expected <clears throat> of a late-night TV show. And if he didn't have that, he wouldn't be nearly as successful because people wouldn't know what to make of him. Um, and and what he does is he turns it into into a question about what we do in churches. You know what 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 cultural expectations are placed on churches? What what needs to be in churches? What should we keep instead of and not scrap? Because that's what people expect to be in a church. You, you hear where I'm going with this? Yeah, I hear where you're going. Keep going. Oh, oh! I'll keep going. So, so here's my question for you, Todd. Okay. What what would it be foolish for us to scrap in the churches if we still want to, people to realize that this is a church? Now you're talking you're talking from from an outsider standpoint. Of course, from an outsider standpoint. You know, I don't know. I guess, uh, and I, I like Rich. My my mind goes to the opposite end of the spectrum, though. Is what what parts of church should we chuck uh, just because a, they've always been there? Yeah. Um, and I think that's it, partly what he's reacting to because, I, you know, I think I think some of the low-hanging fruit, you know, you get rid of the organ, you get rid of this, you get rid of that. And I, I think that there's some low-hanging fruit, you know, what do we do to get away from the old-school church? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, what what do we need to keep, you know, in order to not, not chase away newcomers? Yeah, well... You know, for me, and I'm speaking out of my cultural mm-hmm. uh, area, which is small, rural Midwest, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, for me growing up, and a lot of the people, uh, most people, at least from my generation, generations after me not so much, but most people, a lot of people, had some kind of church experience growing up, okay? Right. They, they went off, they went to Sunday school, or they went to church, and it was, uh, for many people, a uh, uh, Again, I'm speaking for me culturally. It was a a cultural family like experience. So I think that uh, uh, as churches get bigger and larger, that we lose some of that sometimes. But I think that's one of the things that one of the reasons people do come back to church is they kind of miss that. It's almost like a warm fuzzy type feeling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which um, it, it's the whole community feel of it. Uh, and I think it's church. That's something that churches struggle with as they grow and as they get larger. Is still being able to keep that sense of community. Now, as far as worship uh, or service elements, um, I don't know. I mean, we just had uh, 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 a gal bring her couple of kids uh, this past Sunday. Um, obviously, it was uh, she. She hadn't been to church for years, but she was over to uh, uh, this family's house, and he was he was he was on the worship team. He was practicing his guitar. And she's like, you, what, you guys do that kind of music in your church? I'm going to be yeah. there tomorrow. Um, so for her, it was um, something that was very culturally relevant. You know, she didn't want to go to a church that was kind of stodgy, very traditional. And then last week we had, you know, people fill out their cards, and we had somebody say, you know, I really miss the more traditional music, but I love the message. So, right. I mean, I don't know. From all of those different things, you, you can you can take and subtract and and all different kinds of things, but uh, I, I think what he's saying here with uh, with Jimmy Fallon is that it has to still it still has to quack like a duck, right? It still has right. to look like a church, right? In, in some way, shape, or form, or else people don't get it. Yeah, and I, I tell you, there's some um, some things that I've that I've seen out here, Todd. <clears throat> Very highly Catholic area, 
Mm-hmm. There's a church. Um, there's a church not all that far from us that is killing it. It's a church plant, maybe five years old, six years old. Um, but they're they're really they're really doing some cool things. But one of the things that they do, and this is not necessarily their stream, but they have a first Holy Communion um, class, and it's you know it's a non-denominational church. It's it's very Protestant. It's not, but that is a big expectation with it being mm-hmm. such a predominantly post-Catholic area that. Yeah. Of course, we need to have the first Holy Communion because that's what our church, what our family expects. And those services that they do that, they just they pack people in, and then they end up having people continue to be a part of the church. Um, oh come on, man! That's just that's just a ploy to get new people in, new Catholic ex-Catholic people, so you can get their money. Well, come we're on. just we're just trying to sh- we're just trying to sheep steal. That that's what they're doing. You know, they're just trying. <laughs> no, no, I think no, I think that's a great example. I think yeah. um, uh, the expectations are. Are um, you'll never get beyond some people's expectations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and no, go yeah, ahead. I, I think an- another one. And see, now you got my brain, my brain running, Todd, um, which is scary for everybody. But I think another one that people that people point to a lot is just the whole Sunday morning idea. You know, I you probably have a better sense of this than I do, but I I haven't seen very many Saturday night services that are good at reaching out to people. I, when I go to a Saturday night service, I, I find a bunch of Christians that feel like they're doing something rebellious. Um, and, and, and Sunday morning is the time, you know, and so Sunday morning, it's, it's, that's what you do. You go to church, you know, that's, that's what everybody knows is for. It's, so I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of other things that, like this that we, that we can use. Um, or that, that we, we kind of need to keep in order to keep in order to have yeah. people feel comfortable and, coming and, in. Yeah, and I think a couple of the examples you gave are are uh, really key in that it's going to be different in each community. Mm-hmm. It's going to be law uh, far different in Long Island than what it's going to be in Bryan, Ohio. That's for sure. Um, yeah, believe it or not. Want to see my surprise face? Okay, well, with, saw, with, with, that was that was quite the surprise face. Yes. Yeah, with, with the dead air, we're just gonna we're just gonna kill this thing that way. Um, so hey, you know, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. What what do you think that churches need to keep in order for people to be able to know what what they are? Um, and while while you're at it, subscribe and check out ministrybriefing.tv. It is something that we are very excited about, Todd and I. Um, a great tool for church leaders. And actually, you can kind of click the link right there. Um, to go and and check out how you can download your very own copy.